people of the future and welcome to Let's Make a Trading Card Game. Now, a few things have happened in these past two weeks since I've sent you uh, the cards to play with. First of all, I have fixed the power curve. So, the previous version was too steep because um, it made it always worth it to wait a turn. So, what I mean is, um, if a card costs six resource, you have to wait two turns to get to six resource on a certain planet. And um, with how the um, power curve worked previously, uh, it incentivized you to not play things in your early turns and wait and stockpile resource on your home planet until you get to say eight and then you can play a huge threat that countered whatever your opponent was doing these past four turns. Uh, and that's not uh, thing I want to incentivize. I don't want to make people not play cards. <laughs> I want to make them play cards and explore the galaxy. So uh, it was off even um, with the old rules. Now with the new rules on how you conquer planets uh, it's way more obvious that the previous version wasn't working. So that's how the new power curve compares to the old one and it doesn't look um, much less steep, but it actually is, especially in the um, higher um, cost cards. So if something used to cost, say, seven, with the old uh, power curve, uh, it would get 10 impact, with the new one, it would get eight. So that's a pretty significant difference. Also, um, here there have been some changes, be mostly because uh, I changed the initial hand size from five to six cards so that changes the math a bit um, so this difference translates to difference in uh, stats so um, for one resource one colorless resource you would get uh, both with the new and the old power curve uh, one power one health creature um, but let's say for six with the old uh, power curve you would get a 7 power 8 health and a bonus and for for 6 with the new um, it is this one, yeah it, it's the new uh, power curve, you would get uh, 6 power 7 health with a downside so actually it would be like a, a 6 power 6 health with an upside which is quite a difference Plus, uh, I also took into account um, speed. Like I um, had a few problems with the um, ship that moved twice on a turn, so I had to reevaluate what speed was worth in impact. And uh, yeah, that's kind of difficult to uh, explain here on two feet, but um, I have uh, perfectly balanced all the cards, at least in theory. Now, once you start adding abilities and actions, uh, yeah, things will go awry. But that's not a bad thing, because actually you don't want all of the cards to be perfectly balanced. Now, I'll explain that maybe in another episode. I've got a new piece of art from Vasily to show off. Uh, this one is for the Tundra planet, which I think I'll rename the Step planet, because uh, Tundra sounds a bit too specific. Um, so the way we work with Vasily, I wanted to explain to you guys. Um, I'll be working the same way with other artists as well in the future. Uh, is uh, that I first I explain what I want to see in the art, and then uh, the artist draws a quick sketch, and then we go back and forth and discuss the sketch. And if it's approved, then uh, he starts drawing the final art. If not, then he'll do another sketch. So, <laughs> this time he sends me a sketch full of these vertical rocks for the Tundra planet and some of them even flying in the air. And I was <laughs> surprised. Um, I was thinking of a more traditional Tundra with very little vegetation and, you know, small rocks very close to the ground and maybe some snow. And, you know, it's unusual but uh, it does have a more fantasy feel so I ended up agreeing with him and um, I let him be creative and draw his own version which which I, I like really it's different I it's not what I had in mind but it's but I like it uh, also he sent me an updated version of the cloud planet 
with um, a slightly warmer color scheme you can see the difference here and yeah it looks better this way uh, he also uh, changed a few details if I go back and forth you can see them um, and yeah yeah the art is getting really really uh, good you know by this time I was thinking I would be uh, looking for more artists to draw uh, the actual art, not that this isn't actual art, I mean uh, the characters, the creatures, the actions, the non-galaxy cards. But the thing is, I probably uh, need another iteration uh, of um, the base set and another testing iteration. You know, these iterations are becoming smaller and smaller every time, so it will take less time. But still, uh, there are a few things that I need to change and a few things that I want to test and try out before I uh, start looking for people and uh, asking them to draw the art. This is gorgeous though. So you guys have been sending me a lot of feedback lately uh, and you've been very helpful. I can't list everything you've been talking about, but uh, in general uh, you've been finding overpowered cards, which uh, thankfully with the new power curve can be mostly fixed. Um, you've been finding some overpowered combos. There's one in particular which uh, generates, uh, I think, like four resource uh, out of nowhere and you don't lose cards. Um, yeah, that's too powerful. Really uh, fast resource uh, can um, be very destructive to the game. Some of the more powerful cards in Magic the Gathering, for example, are the ones that allow you to generate a lot of resource very quickly. And that can get out of hand really fast, so I will uh, keep that in check. You've also been finding some cards that are really underpowered and basically useless. So, for example, there was a card that um, turns a planet you control into a home planet in addition to your home planet. So you end up with two home planets. And the idea is that um, this way when your opponent uh, conquers either your home planet or this new home planet, you still have another one. You have a spare home planet and you don't lose the game. But uh, the rules are worded in such a way that it seems that if either one of the two home planets is conquered then you lose the game. So it looks like a downside. So it conflicted a bit with the rules and I either had to rewrite the rules or rewrite how uh, the card um, was worded. And either way, that ability is so weak, even if it's not a downside, it doesn't do anything. It works only when you have almost lost and it just prolongs the inevitable, it doesn't further your game plan at all, it doesn't do anything. So, yes, I think that's a good one to eliminate and just sweep under the rug. Some of you had some problems uh, understanding the rules. That's my mistake, of course, not yours. The rule book is very dull without pictures and, uh, you know, even just the way it's written, it's hard to understand. And actually, it turns out it doesn't cover all of the possibilities that uh, can happen in the game. I will be adding what you uh, sent me, uh, I will be filling out all of the blanks. I've also been testing internally and one of the things that I found out is that there aren't enough mechanics that deal with battles. So there's shields, there's range and there's ambush. There's just three. That's pretty much it and um, yeah, if you have range you can attack something far away and get not get damaged. If you have shields you aren't dealt damage uh, the first time you battle and if you have ambush you deal damage first when attacking uh, which gives you a chance to destroy the thing you're attacking. Also another thing that I found out and that many of you pointed out is that uh, ships with two speed are very very powerful, they are much more powerful than ships with one speed and um, this again will be mostly fixed by the power curve but it ends up looking like most ships will have only one speed. So that um, led me to deciding that um, maybe it's best to abandon the whole speed stat and uh, re um, replace it with an ability. Because if only ships have the speed stat and 
most of the ships have one in there. Why do you have the space for the one there? So if we make it an ability and call it flight, for example, it also fixes another problem that I had. It's a minor flavor problem, but still it's a bit annoying. The fact that uh, a creature can be on the ground on a planet and can attack a ship that's flying in the air, supposedly. Um, now, I understand they're both on the same planet in the galaxy, but uh, it just doesn't make sense that a creature can just punch a ship that's flying in the air. I understand if he had a gun or a ranged weapon, but otherwise it doesn't really make sense. It's a minor flavor failure, but I put up with it, because it made gameplay more smooth. Um, but um, if moving now becomes part of an ability, everything changes. So let's say that uh, ships have flight, and the range ability says that you can attack and defend from things that have flight. It makes sense, right? That uh, if you have a gun which, has, which is a ranged weapon, uh, it can shoot at spaceships that fly. It's just cleaner uh, from a design standpoint. Also, flight can say things like this card can only be attacked by cards with flight and or range. And again, it makes perfect sense. It's good to look back at the game as a whole and sometimes uh, you will find things that maybe you never thought you would change. Uh, but then, once you look at them again with a fresh pair of eyes, <laughs> you find that uh, they can be changed and improved. I think I will also get rid of the ambush ability and replace it with one that I've called Quick Shot, uh, that says this card deals damage first in battle, doesn't matter if it's attacking or defending. Uh, it just, again, it's cleaner, it makes sense. But the idea of ambushing your opponent will still be there, just in another form. Um, see, I have to do another iteration uh, with all of the changes that I'm doing, and um, it's not like I'm going back, I'm going forward. Is that, that's just how games are made. Uh, you create something, you test it, and then you improve upon it. Then you test again, and then you change again. And every time the iteration process um, gets... You know, the time between one iteration and another becomes smaller and smaller, and the changes themselves become smaller and smaller. So if you look back at my old videos, um, after a playtest session I would like add two colors or change the rules of the game and now it's not uh, uh, not so big of, of, of a change I'm just um, fine-tuning the mechanics and maybe uh, the card combinations and individual cards and, and there's just something I want to try that's been in the back of my mind for such a long time uh, and I've removed it from the game long before even episode one of Let's Make a Trading Card Game because um, it made the gameplay too complex and it was instantaneous effects. So, let me explain. In the game of Multiverse, as you know it, you can play cards on your turn. You can play actions, uh, creatures, and you know, you can move them around, do things only on your turn. And when it's your opponent's turn, you wait and look at what's going on and what's happening. But you can only do stuff on your turn. And um, suppose you're playing with six players, and it's your turn, you do your thing, and then the turn passes to the person to your right, or your right or left, doesn't matter. Uh, they're doing their thing, you're waiting. Then the turn passes to the third person, you're waiting, you can't do anything, you might as well go and buy you yourself a sandwich uh, and come back and, uh, and still it won't be your turn. You, you, the thing is that you cannot interact with the other players when it's not your turn, which isn't the best thing in multiplayer games and even in two-player games. It means you're playing only half of the time. So instantaneous effects, um, the idea behind them is that you can uh, play them during your opponent's turn, which doesn't mean all of the cards, just a, a small subsection of the cards uh, that can be, you know, traps or reactions, whatever they may be called. So this way, if you have resource on a planet, your opponents will be wary of, you know, maybe attacking it because they don't know, maybe you have um, something in your hand, uh, an instantaneous ability that 
uh, destroy something they don't know. It adds tension, it adds the ability to bl bluff. So you can pretend like uh, you have uh, an instantaneous ability. So you sit there with a lot of resource, just waiting for someone to, to move towards uh, the plant with the resource. And um, this way you can play mind games with your opponents and it allows all of the players to interact in a multiplayer game during any player's turn. And it adds a lot of depth to the gameplay. The problem is that it adds a lot of complexity to the gameplay. And um, it slows down the gameplay. So way back when uh, the gameplay was really slow, but now it's getting really fast. So I'm thinking more and more that I should at least try integrating some sort of uh, instantaneous um, action, maybe instant actions, I don't know what they will be called exactly, um, and see how the gameplay changes and um, it may turn out to be uh, a great change for the game. Um, but if it turns out to be too complex then I will remove them and um, there will be no harm done. Because the game is fun. You've been telling me through email that the game is fun. Every single person I think that uh, has sent me feedback has used the word fun, which is really reassuring. I've had the chance to talk to some of you playtesters through Skype and I wanted to add some of uh, our conversations um, here to this video but uh, it's getting a bit long so maybe I'll uh, add them in another video but still here's a, here's a taste of it. So how was your experience with Multiverse? Uh, well, the game is kind of fun. That was pretty fun. When uh, you don't have any balance issues. Sometimes it could get a little bit uninteractive. But other than that, it was, it was alright, I'd say. Uh, it really seems like uh, we're battling in a galaxy. Well, you know, at this moment that's a good result, uh, I'd say. So I'll start working on this new iteration of Multiverse and hopefully the game will be even more fun than it is now. So uh, I'll see you guys next time and until then, keep it up.